Welcome, this is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions, and today I plan to alter Tactica's multifamily development pro forma to account for a deferred development fee. Now, deferred development fees are rare in market rate development. I don't see it too often, but I did receive this question a few months ago from a customer, and I thought I'd tackle a tutorial for all of you. This video will serve as primarily an Excel tutorial, but I do consider it kind of more, more of a workaround versus a permanent solution if, if this is something you want to implement deal after deal. Generally speaking, deferred development fees are more common in affordable developments, such as a low-income housing tax credit project, which is really outside of the scope of what Tactica pro forma models are meant to handle. If you're interested in learning more about development fees, including the difference between standard and deferred and some of the implications they can have on underwriting and returns, there's a blog post posted in the description that will go over all of the qualitative details of development fees. If you've been enjoying Tactica's tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to our channel, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Let's go ahead, jump in, and get the model altered. I have an underwriting run for a development project fully populated in Tactica's multifamily development model. We're looking at the project summary tab, which really summarizes all the main components of the deal. If we scroll over to the far right here, you can see we have a section dedicated to fees and I've already plugged in that we're going to charge a 3% development fee. Uh, this percentage is based on total project costs and that equals out to $976,000. So if we come to the budget and draw tab, you can see in row 28, I have a line item dedicated to developer fee. So our assumption that we plugged in on the project summary tab flows to this tab. You can see that 976,000 and I'm currently allocating that evenly over the construction period. Our construction period is 14 months and you can see each month $69,752 would be paid out in development fees. Now this is pretty standard. This is what I usually see when I get these development models from developers in my hands. Sometimes I'll also run it on a bell curve, which will kind of ramp up, make the development fee ramp up as construction costs ramp up, and then back down again towards the tail end of construction. Those are the two most common ways, but we need to make a change here if we, if we wanna account for a deferred development fee. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change the method to custom. So when you use the custom method in Tactica's development model, you're basically telling it that you're, you're gonna manually type in where you want that expense allocated during the construction timeline. But what we're gonna do here is we're not gonna enter in anything. We're just gonna leave it blank. So then if we scroll over all the way to the right side, you can see that $975,000, it now shows up in the balance column. So we are not using these funds at all during construction. They're just sitting there and they'll be available. Now I wanna take a look at the return summary tab. So here's kind of the high level financial projections we have for all of our revenue, expense items, refinance, future, future residual sale. And I really wanna focus on the refinance section. In the current underwriting run, our construction loan paid down is 20 million 13,000. However, if we come back to the project summary tab, we scroll back over and we look at our total construction loan amount, it's 21, so we're like a million dollars shy of what we were allocated. Why is that happening? Well, we didn't use our development fee. It's still sitting on the balance. So the model is assuming that we were way under our construction budget. It doesn't know that we're, it's, it's the development fee causing this, but essentially it's paying off less construction loan because we, it thinks we didn't use those funds. And then that would flow to the project cash flows and be distributed amongst the sponsors and LPs, um, you know, dictated by whatever the operating agreement states the, the splits are, the appropriate splits. But that's not accurate because this 975,000 or almost a million dollars, it needs to go to the developer. We're deferring the fee until refinance. So what I will do is I'm gonna add two different rows to account for this development fee. We'll call it deferred dev fee. And then I'll just copy and paste that down below in the residual sales section. And then I'm just gonna write a simple formula that says equals if the cell above equals zero, then 
we want a zero to populate. Otherwise, we want our negative development fee that we dictated on the project summary tab to populate. And we'll lock that cell, close the bracket, and then we'll drag that through year 10 of the pro forma. So now it's showing up. Now we're refinancing. And along with the refinance, this is the time we had a successful construction. We, we have deferred the fee until this point, but it's going to be paid out to the developer at this time. However, we also need to account for it down below in the residual sales section. The formula I'm going to write is a little more compl complicated. Um, so I'm actually going to just swing by the IRR sources tab. I'm going to grab the refi year here, and I'm going to bring this back to the return summary. You can see we already have the month summarized that we're refinancing, but I just want a similar calculation to run for the year. It just makes it a little easier to reference this year two in the next formula we're going to write versus the month. And then I'm just going to say equals if the year is less than or equal to the refi year of two years, and I'll lock that cell. And then if that's the case, we're just going to grab, we'll do a sum and grab this entire development fee row here. We don't know when we're going to change assumptions in the model. So the refi could bounce around between year two, year three, potentially even year four. So we just want to grab it all. It can only happen once. So we're good with the sum formula here. And then if that's not the case, then we want a zero to populate. And I'm going to scroll back over and then I can just drag all of that through to year 10. So that will finalize the alterations. Now, our model, the model's smart. If we're looking at like the IRRs and equity multiples below, so see that 50.92% if you were to sell in year two. If you're to sell in year two, the model knows that you would not refinance and then sell. You wouldn't go through the work of finding permanent financing, paying a permanent financing fee just to sell it immediately. So that 50.92% IRR and 2.28 equity multiple, it ignores the refinance directly above it. It knows that you would have some cash flow from your project leasing up, but there wouldn't be any refinance revenues. However, if we're looking at the IRR, say in year three or four in those equity multiples, the model knows that a refinance took place the year earlier and you would have received your deferred development fee in this case in year two. Now, since we've made this alteration, there's one thing that we need to keep a watchful eye on. If we go to the budget and draw tab, we scroll back over, there's a, there's a cell dedicated to the pre-refi operating shortfall. So what happens here is if you have a slower lease up and you don't have enough operating reserve set aside in your construction budget, the model will tell you right here in this cell, if there's a shortfall in funds. And if there's a shortfall, you could then go back to your construction budget up to the operating shortfall row and add to the funds to essentially make sure you're hedged. Um, a lot of times, you know, there's just not enough cash flow early on in the lease up of a property to support the debt service. And this is the cell that lets you know that. However, since we have this entire development fee sitting on the balance, there's never going to be a shortfall. The model doesn't distinguish what's showing up in the balance section. Now, the most common things you'll see is the operating reserve, obviously making sure you have funds to help and support the property during lease up. You'll see some marketing funds, right? Cause you're gonna be leasing up units. You need capital to be able to put out the units on some sort of listing service, or, or you know, maybe you'll have a broker help you lease the units. And always there's some capitalized interest that will show up in this case, $96,000. But now there's nearly a million dollars sitting in the balance. And the model, if, if you don't have enough operating reserve to cover cash shortfalls, during the early days of lease up, the model is going to just use the development fee to cover that. I think it would be wise to come back to the return summary tab and just do a little calculation off to the right. So we'll do, we want to know the total loan amount that we're approved for, and then also the draw amounts. And then if there's a surplus. So the loan amount is stated on the project summary tab. The total construction loan amount is a little over 21 million. The total draw amount is the amount of construction loan we'd be paying down plus the developer fee. And then the surplus is just 
going to be the difference between the two of them. So right now we have a surplus of $147,000, which is pretty conservative. What this is telling me is we have too much operating reserve right now. We have a relatively fast lease up, and you can see in the budget and draw tab, this 300,000 right now that we have in there, that's for operating reserve. That's to help hedge those months where there's, there's not enough cash flow yet to support the construction interest. That's a good problem to have. Um, and it's, it's rare that the loan draw amounts and the total construction loan amounts tie out perfectly because most underwriters are conservative and they're always gonna err on the side of caution, have extra operating reserve. And then if the lease up happens as expected, as projected, or even, even better than projected, you'd be paying off slightly less construction loans as you didn't use those funds. So in this case, the surplus is 147,000 and we're in decent shape. But let's go back to the project summary tab and go to our lease up assumption. So right now we have a 20% pre-lease assumption and, and then leasing 16 units per month thereafter. Let's adjust this to 10. So it's gonna be a slower lease up. And now we come back to the return summary tab. I used poor Excel etiquette, I did not make this a dynamic formula. I just need to drag our draw amounts over. It's a slower lease up. So now the refinance won't happen until one year later. But now the surplus goes negative. It goes to minus $48,000. So what exactly is happening here when, when we're negative? So if we come to the stabilized operations tab, um, there's some details down at the bottom. There's a row that tracks remaining loan amounts. So with a slower lease up, we're, we're dipping in to those construction loan proceeds to basically hedge the years where the operating cash flow is negative. And while we're doing that, the remaining loan balance dips all the way to $927,000. Well, we're planning on paying ourselves a development fee of $975,000. So what essentially is happening is we're dipping into our development fee to cover those cash flow shortfalls. Now, that's not necessarily the end of the world because there's a significant amount of refinance proceeds here. So the model is still gonna pay out the $975,000 to the developer. However, it will be dipping into the refi proceeds to make that happen. So as long as the operating agreement between the sponsor and other investors dictated that, you know, if there wasn't enough construction loan proceeds to pay the full development fee, they'd be able to dip into either sales proceeds or or refinance proceeds to make them whole, that would be acceptable. But it's just something you need to keep in mind. And obviously, if you're banking on sale proceeds, refinance proceeds, that's inherently more risky, right? Because you don't have control of some of those mac macro factors that will impact how much refinancing proceeds you'll get or, or sale proceeds you'll receive. So it's just, it's it's more risky. If, you're, if you are short, if you see the surplus here is negative, the wise thing to do would be to come to your operating budget. And so we are minus 47,000. We have um, 300,000 in this assumption right now. Let's just increase it by 50K. So now it's $350,000. Now we come back, look at our manual calculation and the surplus is positive again. In summary, we took a development pro forma model built for a standard development fee and adjusted it to defer the development fee until they're refinanced. As a reminder, I have a blog post in the description that talks about some of the consequences of how a deferred development fee can impact underwriting and returns and some of the difference between a standard and deferred arrangement. If you've been enjoying Tactica's tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.